Hi, I'm Michael with Epic Mini Life. We've been asked quite a bit um, through this journey how we handle the technology inside of our rig. The first component of any home entertainment system, at least in RV life, is the internet setup. The internet setup we use uh, is a combination of existing um, sticks and bricks type uh, equipment and then also stuff that's made specifically for mobile lifestyles. The core component of our system is uh, what's called an AT&T home base. The home base was originally designed for rural America to replace DSL lines and hard wires. Uh, in fact, the device itself has an RJ11 jack for a telephone. So when you connect this device to the AT&T network, they actually assign a phone number. And that means that you can use a fax line, you can use a phone, however you want to do that. Uh, it also has RJ45 jacks. If you don't know what that is, it's basically a standard Ethernet jack. The device takes the, the AT&T LTE signal, um, puts it into a little routing device, and then allows you to share that via Wi-Fi. Fortunately for us, when we fired the device, we were up in Michigan, and it was a pilot program, and they had um, truly unlimited plans then. So for us, I think we have the AT&T Unlimited Choice, which means that once we hit the 22 gigabyte limit, which has become a standard somehow, our bandwidth may slow. With the other plan, it will slow to 128K. So if you, if you were listening and reading between the lines, it means that we have truly unlimited AT&T LTE in our RV here. Phenomenal. In fact, our daughter, who is not here, helped us go through about 850 gigabytes of data on the AT&T network, and we were never slowed down once. So thank you, AT&T, for grandfathering us into that plan. The power of our system here is an airport extreme. I turned off the Wi-Fi radio inside of the home base and uh, have in, instead connected the airport extreme via Ethernet and, allow, and used that as my uh, Wi-Fi network here at home. It's just more robust, it's faster um, than the one that's built into that um, uh, home base. And it also has another special feature that we really like. Number one is it gives us more Ethernet ports for the different devices that we um, have and I'll, I'll show you those in just a little bit. But it also has a USB port and in that USB port you can plug a USB hub into it, connect hard drives to it, connect a printer to it, and connect other miscellaneous devices. So, And that would make all of those available wirelessly. So if you have a printer that doesn't have Wi-Fi built into it right now, you can plug it right into the airport, or airport extreme and you can share that thing over your network. It's pretty stellar. Um, the next component is our WeBoost. We did that for those remote times when we're out kind of in the middle of nowhere, we have sketchy internet, we uh, have the, the WeBoost device that will amplify the signal, give us better signal. It works pretty well. You can actually measure the, um, the output levels in the application that is provided with the home base, so that's pretty cool too. I also modified our television antenna, so uh, instead of having a TV antenna on top, I filed all that stuff off with the uh, Dremel tool and then attached the WeBoost antenna to that extension. And so um, instead of having it fixed to our ladder or to the side of the air conditioning unit, which I've seen people do, it's actually on a, uh, on a tilt so we can raise it and lower it um, and get extra uh, vertical height out of that thing. Why don't we show you a couple of the components and um, we can get moving on. The top of the cabinets here actually have about an inch and a half to two inches of a recess. And so you can't see it from the ground floor, but all of our devices are up here. This is our WeBoost. That comes back around here to the other side. You'll see that we have exactly one extension cord with three plugs. This is the actual cell antenna for the WeBoost. And um, that thing points directly at our AT&T home base. This is the LTE to uh, Wi-Fi slash Ethernet device that I talked about earlier. Um, then the next device is our Apple Airport Extreme. And um, that thing has several Ethernet ports in the back and a USB port. The USB port actually powers our Samsung SmartThings hub. We only had three plugs in our extension cord. And I have three devices plus this USB powered one, so I just decided to use the USB port inside of the Airport Extreme. The second thing that we do with our RV is we have a couple of devices to help us take care of the dogs. Um, we built some uh, space for the kennels for the dogs to go underneath our daughter's bed. And you'll notice that one of the devices right there is, um, is the drop cam. What we do is we we use that so that when we're out on the road and we're out maybe having dinner or hanging out with friends outside even, we can keep an eye on the 
dogs um, in their kennels from wherever. That connects to the Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi connects to LTE, and then we can use our phones wherever we are. Uh, it also has a microphone in it, and so we have a, a setting in the application that if, um, if it hears a loud noise to let us know via push notification, that will tell us if they're barking, uh, for example. We also have another device called the uh, Samsung SmartThings Hub, and we have exactly one device connected to that. It is a temperature sensor, and it is also um, a thermometer. And we use that thermometer also to send us push notifications in case it gets a little warm in the RV while we're away. We'll know to come back and take care of that um, because we don't want the dogs to overheat. So we have that set at 80 degrees. If, there, if the temperature in the RV goes over 80, we all get push notifications, all of us in the family. Um, if there's a loud bark while we're gone and the girls are here in their kennel, then we'll hear that noise as well or get a notification for that. We also have in, uh, behind me uh, a drop cam. It is facing directly out the back of the rig and that's actually a public camera. So anybody that has the URL to that, you can find it on our website, epicmini.life. You can see what we see out of our office view. Uh, for some reason, those pictures, when I take those pictures out of the back of our RV with the, um, the computers and everything in it, those get high engagement. So it's really interesting. So people clearly want to see that. Thank you for looking if you do. The third segment and third most important part of what we do here and, and part of why we did this video is we have an audio video set up that it's, it's not the highest end components. Um, so every piece that I show you, you can actually upgrade individually and put your own system in there. If you have an existing projector that you like, if you have an existing drop down screen, you can use that too. Um, we're actually using the amplifier that came with the rig. Remember this thing was made in 2006. So um, that's been an interesting challenge because it doesn't have all the ports that all the modern devices do. So we've had to have some interesting workarounds there. The next thing I want to talk about is um, the old school amplifier. It does have auxiliary in. And so what I was able to do is use an auxiliary cable and that thing um, gets routed behind this. I had to drill a hole in between these two shelves and it comes over into this cabinet which you'll see has not only the projector right here that we use, it's a 720p projector. It will take um, 1080p, but this one only outputs 720, which is very handy from a bandwidth perspective. Um, it doesn't use near as much as 1080p, and you can't tell the difference because it downscales. Um, the uh, output of the Apple TV goes into this little Bluetooth device. Since I didn't have a way to get audio from the Apple TV or the projector, it doesn't have audio out either, um, I had to get creative. So the Apple TV pushes audio to this device that goes into the auxiliary input of the amplifier. And from there, it goes into our surround sound system. And you can see the speakers back here. This is the rear right. Over there is the rear left. And if you swing back around over here, you can see um, the center speaker and then the left and right. Now, those cables uh, run along the top of the slide on this side, not on the outside, obviously. They go down, uh, they all meet over here, go down this white conduit, and then underneath here, you might be able to see it, you might not, there's actually a black conduit that takes it to the exterior of the slide. Um, I was able to recover all of the uh, all of the cables from the original installation. The entertainment center was over here, the uh, original amplifier, tube television, the desk was over here. So um, I did some creative splicing and, and was able to reuse the wires that were used for surround sound actually to power these two speakers. I only had to, to run one extra wire, so um, that was pretty cool. So let's talk about one more thing. Um, you saw the projector, but you haven't seen the screen. I mean, you, you've seen it up here. This thing, serves several purposes in our house. It was originally designed just to be a screen so we could watch um, our video content from the Apple TV. But you'll notice now that it, it also serves as a room divider. So um, when our daughter goes to bed at night, she pulls that thing down and she's got her own little cubby hole, which is pretty cool uh, for her. Uh, acting as a room divider, it's, it's been pretty helpful for us. When she gets frustrated with us or she just needs a moment, She'll jump in her bed and pull down the room divider, and it's it's actually pretty fun. But um, this is interestingly, it's a um, it's a four by three screen, and it was originally in a school. Oh, that's nice. Uh, it was originally in a school, and I bought it for twenty five dollars on Craigslist. So you have several different approaches to audio and video equipment, technology in general. 
You can either go out and buy all the newest stuff and the latest and greatest. Um, you can have a mix of that and some older technology, which is what we've chosen to do. Uh, or you can go completely old school. As long as it does what you need it to do, that's the right method and the right thing to do. For us, I decided it was worth $25 to not pull the uh, projector screen all the way down and just more or less use it as a 16 by 9 screen. And that looks pretty good. Um, we also did Craigslist for another device, which was the projector. I think that device when I got it was $225 and it should have been about $350 if I remember correctly. So that's another Craigslist find. Let's talk about the reason we have an Apple TV. Um, the Apple TV plays audio and video content from the Apple iTunes store, right? Uh, Heather and I have been Apple fans since, uh, since we met. That was 1994. I was an Apple value-added reseller through the 90s. Um, I just love the technology and I love the operating system and love the capabilities Apple introduces. Now, they're not always first to a technology, but sometimes they are. In fact, um, the technology that's built in there that we leveraged the crap out of is called AirPlay. What that does is it allows you to take your uh, video or your audio from a phone or a tablet or even your Mac and, and a PC using a piece of software called AirParrot and you can push whatever you want to the Apple TV. It goes through the entire audio video setup and ends up on the screen. Very handy for watching YouTube videos, um, very handy for watching uh, motorcycle races, which we do. It plays in the browser really nicely on the PC and then we push that video content to the uh, screen over here. Works out pretty well. Sometimes there are just things you need to watch on the web that don't have an app and don't play well on a device. That's when the PC comes in handy or when the uh, tablet or the uh, Macs come in handy. Uh, we also have an Apple TV in the other room in the bedroom and we have another television in there. It doesn't have the YouTube app on it, so it's a little bit older. We use our devices to push video to that. So, and then the other thing um, that I wanted to touch on real quick is the fact that we use DirecTV Now. Um, the DirecTV Now application replaces the satellite dish. It uses LTE from uh, AT&T and allows you to watch television live, which we rarely do, but there are a couple of shows that we really like that we like to watch live. One is Survivor. We've been watching Survivor since the beginning, more or less, but as a family over the last 10 years or so. And then the other one is, of course, Walking Dead, and we're catching up on Fear the Walking Dead. So we can watch those things live using DirecTV Now. Pretty cool stuff. But that um, Apple TV in the other room doesn't support DirecTV Now, so we use our, app, our uh, apps on our phones and our tablets to push video in there. So that's an overview of the audio and video technologies in the place. Uh, like I mentioned early on, every one of these components can be upgraded. The Apple TV could be replaced with any number of inputs. It could be a, a Chromecast, it could be a Fire TV, be a Roku, uh, whatever you want to use, whatever works on your, your platform. Also remember that you can upgrade all of these components individually. Um, you don't have to use low end, you don't have to use high end. We chose this lifestyle because we were trying to play a trick on life and, uh, and it's worked out pretty well. In fact, you should follow the hashtag on Instagram called Eat Frugally. It's where we, um, well Heather mostly cooks meals for less than $2.50 per person. So that's pretty stellar generally way under 252. Um, I, I alluded to this earlier, when we were in Michigan picking up the rig, uh, we got that AT&T home base and it has the truly unlimited plan from AT&T. They don't have that plan anymore, but we were able to get it not only on the uh, home base, but also on all of our phones. So we have three iPhones uh, and an additional tablet on this plan, and that means that we can use our iPhones as tethering devices. So if we're out at a coffee shop or we're out in the middle of a park somewhere, we don't have internet, we can turn on our hotspots on our phone, and that's also, well, that's 10 gigabytes. The data for the phone is also unlimited, so um, that's a pretty neat feature of the at and service we have. That's all I have for you today. Again, thanks for asking the question. Thanks for, for prompting me to do this video. Uh, again, people have asked for this for a long time. If you like this content, if you like this video, go back and watch our other ones. We'd love to have your feedback on those, too. And uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you really like the content, like we hope most people do, click the little bell, because that'll alert, uh, alert you when we put new content out there. Thanks to everyone for watching and liking us everywhere, Instagram, Facebook, uh, and here on YouTube. So thanks again. Have a great day.